Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to go on an adventure and talk a little bit about a discovery of a new planet that actually kind of creates more questions than answers. We're also going to talk about this unusual phenomenon known as the Fulton Gap and speculate about why is it that this very specific type of a planet in the universe just doesn't seem to exist. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. Now, I think you'll agree when I say that there is very likely a lot of exceptionally unusual planets out there, like the one you see on the screen right now. I don't really know if a planet like this exists, but chances are that it does. This is of course procedurally generated, but nevertheless kind of makes you mind wonder. In the last few months or so, there were actually quite a lot of really cool discoveries, but one discovery kind of really um, made me realize that I wasn't really that productive when I was younger. Specifically, um, it actually comes from my hometown of Montreal, uh, where this relatively young researcher uh, that just started her graduate school basically already discovered a planet, but not just a planet. She discovered a very rare type of a planet. As a matter of fact, a type of a planet that we didn't really think may even exist. Now, let me backtrack a little bit before I talk about this discovery and um, help you understand what's going on in terms of these types of planets. Now, let's just say I take all of the exoplanets we discovered and basically put them in a kind of a graphical representation by radius and by number of planets discovered. What I'll get is something like this. Now, what this shows you is the planetary radius right here, so anywhere from, I guess, about 0.8 radii of Earth to about 3.3 radii of Earth and the number of planets per star system. What's unusual here is that, well, we haven't really discovered many large planets in terms of radius, but we also haven't really discovered many small ones, and that's because it's kind of hard to see them, they're really small. But in between them, there is this unusual gap, and this is what we call Fulton Gap. This uh, gap of radius has not been explained. We don't really understand why we don't really have that many planets as a matter of fact, maybe no planets between the radius of about 1.5 to about 2 radii of Earth. In other words, if I were to basically pick a random star system in Space Engine on just even like this planet right here, and were to take a look at it, its radius would most likely be either below 1.4 radii of Earth or above 2 something radii of Earth. Not 1.5, not 1.6, and not 2. And we don't really know why this is so. Um, we've actually looked at approximately 3,000 exoplanets, and um, soon there's going to be almost 4,000 confirmed exoplanets. And for the most part, this unusual relationship um, is still out there. There's just a lack of planets between 1.5 to 2 radii of Earth. And it just so happens that this is exactly what Marin Peterson, the researcher from Montreal, um, along with her team obviously, discovered. She discovered a planet that fits right here on the end of the uh, Fulton Gap. Basically a planet that is extremely rare and a planet that we can now actually study in a lot of detail because it just so happens that Wolf 503b is precisely located in such a region where we can see it very easily and we can actually analyze details of this particular planet. Now this actually makes this quite an incredible discovery because these planets, like I said, are extremely rare and for the most part we actually weren't even sure that maybe they existed. Um, there were some planets that were kind of questionable but this particular discovery really makes it um, quite obvious that yeah, they're out there, but I guess they're just rare. And to give you an idea of what this uh, system looks like and what this planet kind of looks like, I created this model in Universe Inbox with the actual star right there and the two versions of this planet um, on the sides. Now, there's a reason why I decided to create two versions. That's because we are not sure what this planet is made out of yet. We haven't really studied it enough to actually know its mass and we don't really know its composition. It could be made out of um, gas, like this one right here, it could be actually basically a mini Neptune, and in this case it would maybe have a mass um, that's about 
three or two and a half masses of Earth. It would not be very dense, but it also would uh, most likely um, have quite an extensive atmosphere because basically that's what's given it the size. But on the other hand, it could be what's known as a super Earth. And so it could be basically made out of rock. And if it's made out of rock, its mass is going to be dramatically different. It's actually going to be anywhere from 10 to maybe even uh, 15 masses of Earth, depending on density. And um, essentially, it would be extremely, extremely dense and also have very, very high surface gravity. As a matter of fact, uh, the surface gravity here would be close to um, what it is on Jupiter. So there's definitely still a lot of questions that are not answered, but what's interesting is that uh, this first discovery basically uh, will lead us to answering a lot of questions of why these planets are just not out there, why we don't see that many of them. And um, for the longest time, many uh, scientists actually thought maybe it's because, well, these planets kind of either collide with each other and create other planets, like for example, maybe this is how Earth was created. On the other hand, maybe they're mostly uh, swallowed by the star um, early in the development of the solar system, or maybe they're just kicked out by larger planets. So there's actually still not really a definitive answer for why uh, the photon gap is there, for why these planets are missing from most star systems. But hopefully this particular object, known as Wolf 506b, will give us this answer, because like I said, it's actually relatively easy to study. Now, let's actually uh, run the simulation for a few minutes because I want to see how hot these planets will get. And um, in this particular star system, uh, the actual planet orbits uh, very close to its parent star, which is about uh, 65 to 70 percent the mass of the Sun. And the planets here orbit um, with an actual period of about six days. So as you can imagine, they're going to get really, really hot. This one here, the rocky one, is already at a temperature of about 450 degrees Celsius, and that's without any atmosphere. So it's already as hot as Venus, and uh, one that's Neptune-like is steaming away, but it's approximately 374 degrees Celsius. And you can actually even see the tail of the atmosphere that's being created by the evaporation of this um, gas planet. Now, we might even be able to see this if we uh, look at Wolf 506b, and uh, hopefully the future telescopes, like for example the James Webb telescope, will actually be able to identify if there is a thick atmosphere here, or if it's a rocky world like what we've created here. And if it is a rocky world, we'll even be able to see what kind of atmosphere it has, and even uh, possibly be able to detect its composition and any water that might be here, or not just water, but other elements as well. So for all we know, it's a super hot world like you see right here, that's glowing and creating heat by itself, or maybe it's actually a much more calm gas-like world that you see in the back with the mini Neptune world that I've created here. So. In the next few years, we'll hopefully be able to answer these questions and find out what is actually happening in the universe and why is it that these planets are so rare. And just to give you a comparison with Earth, this is actually what Earth looks like right next to this planet. It's, as you can see, about half the size and essentially a lot less massive as well, meaning that you could hypothetically place Earth in an orbit around this world and it would actually uh, be technically the moon of this Wolf 506b. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video, and most importantly, I actually wanted to, um, in some sense, inspire you to maybe go out there and look for things just like this researcher did. She's just started her master's degree, she's still young, but she's already discovered this incredible world. Now imagine what you could do. Go out there, find new things, discover and be proud of them. I really hope that you're going to be the next person I talk about in one of the future videos and I really hope that um, th there's something that you will discover that's going to change the humanity. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Space out and as always, bye bye. And I personally think that this right here is the most realistic representation of this particular world. It's an unusual very, very hot and very beautiful lava planet.